In mathematics, the Radon-Nikodym theorem is a result in measure theory which states that, given a measurable space, if a sigma finite measure on is absolutely continuous with respect to a sigma finite measure mu on, then there is a measurable function, such that for any measurable subset, the function f is called the Radon-Nikodym derivative and denoted by the theorem is named after Johann Radon, who proved the theorem for the special case where the underlying space is Rn in 1913, and for Otto Nikodym who proved the general case in 1930. In 1936 Hans Freudenthal further generalized the Radon-Nikodym theorem by proving the Freudenthal spectral theorem, the result in Rees space theory, which contains the Radon-Nikodym theorem as a special case. If Y is a Banach space and the generalization of the Radon-Nikodym theorem also holds for functions with values in Y, then Y is said to have the Radon-Nikodym property. All Hilbert spaces have the Radon-Nikodym property. Radon-Nikodym derivative The function f satisfying the above equality is uniquely defined up to a mu null set, that is, if g is another function which satisfies the same property, then f equals g mu almost everywhere. f is commonly written and is called the Radon-Nikodym derivative. The choice of notation and the name of the function reflects the fact that the function is analogous to a derivative in calculus in the sense that it describes the rate of change of density of one measure with respect to another. A similar theorem can be proven for signed and complex measures. Namely, that if mu is a non-negative sigma finite measure, and nu is a finite valued signed or complex measure such that nu mu, i.e., nu is absolutely continuous with respect to mu, then there is a mu integrable real or complex valued function g on x such that for every measurable set a applications, the theorem is very important in extending the ideas of probability theory from probability masses and probability densities defined over real numbers to probability measures defined over arbitrary sets. It tells if and how it is possible to change from one probability measure to another. Specifically, the probability density function of a random variable is the Radon-Nikodym derivative of the induced measure with respect to some base measure. For example, it can be used to prove the existence of conditional expectation for probability measures. The latter itself is a key concept in probability theory, as conditional probability is just a special case of it. Amongst other fields, financial mathematics uses the theorem extensively. Such changes of probability measure are the cornerstone of the rational pricing of derivatives and are used for converting actual probabilities into those of the risk-neutral probabilities. Properties Let nu, mu, and lambda be sigma finite measures on the same measure space. If nu lambda and mu lambda equals zero only if A is the empty set, and then nu is also zero, assume that the Radon-Nikodym theorem holds, that is, for some measurable function f1 has for all Borel sets, taking A to be a singleton set, A equals A, and using the above equality, one finds for all real numbers A. This implies that the function f, and therefore the Lebesgue measure nu, is zero, which is a contradiction. Proof. This section gives a measure theoretic proof of the theorem. There is also a functional analytic proof, using Hilbert space methods, that was first given by von Neumann. For finite measures mu and nu, the idea is to consider functions f with f d mu d nu. The supremum of all such functions, along with the monotone convergence theorem, then furnishes the Radon-Nikodym derivative. The fact that the remaining part of mu is singular with respect to nu follows from a technical fact about finite measures. Once the result is established for finite measures, extending to sigma finite, signed, and complex measures can be done naturally. The details are given below. For finite measures first, suppose mu and nu are both finite-valued non-negative measures. Let f be the set of those measurable functions f, x, 0, infinity, such that, 
f, since it contains at least the zero function. Now let f1, f2, f, and suppose a be an arbitrary measurable set, and define. Then one has and therefore, max, f1, f2, f. Now, let fn be a sequence of functions in f such that by replacing fn with the maximum of the first n functions, one can assume that the sequence fn is increasing. Let g be an extended valued function defined as by Lebig's monotone convergence theorem, one has for each a sigma, and hence, gf, also, by the construction of g. Now, since gf, defines a non-negative measure on sigma, suppose mu 0 0, then, since mu is finite, there is an epsilon greater than 0 such that mu 0 greater than epsilon mu. Let be a Hahn decomposition for the signed measure nu0 minus epsilon mu. Note that for every a sigma 1 has nu0 epsilon mu, and hence, also, note that mu greater than 0, for if mu equals 0, then nu0 nu equals 0. So nu0 equals 0 and contradicting the fact that mu0 greater than epsilon mu. Then, since g plus epsilon 1 pf and satisfies this is impossible, therefore, the initial assumption that mu 0 0 must be false. So mu 0 equals 0, as desired. Now, since g is mu integrable, the set xx, g equals infinity, is mu null. Therefore, if af is defined as then f has the desired properties. As for the uniqueness, let f g x 0 infinity be measurable functions satisfying for every measurable set a then g minus f is mu integrable and in particular for a equals x x f greater than g or x x f less than g it follows that and so that plus e equals 0 mu almost everywhere the same is true for minus and thus f equals g mu almost everywhere as desired for sigma finite positive measures if mu and nu are sigma finite, then x can be written as the union of a sequence b n n of disjoint sets in sigma, each of which has finite measure under both mu and nu. For each n, there is a sigma measurable function f n b n 0 infinity such that for each sigma measurable subset a of b n, the union f of those functions is then the required function. As for the uniqueness, since each of the fn is mu almost everywhere unique, then so is f. For signed and complex measures if nu is a sigma finite signed measure, then it can be Hahn Jordan decomposed as nu equals nu plus minus nu minus where one of the measures is finite. Applying the previous result to those two measures, one obtains two functions, g, h, x, 0, infinity, satisfying the radon nicodym theorem for nu plus and nu minus respectively, at least one of which is mu integrable. It is clear then that f equals g minus h satisfies the required properties, including uniqueness. Since both g and h are unique up to mu almost everywhere equality, if nu is a complex measure, it can be decomposed as nu equals nu1 plus i nu2, where both nu1 and nu2 are finite valued signed measures. Applying the above argument, one obtains two functions, g, h, x, 0, infinity, satisfying the required properties for nu1 and nu2, respectively. Clearly, f equals g plus i h is the required function.